If you know how to sew, you know how to use power tools. You see, sewing is just like carpentry, except the materials that you cut up and put back together again are just a lot more lightweight. Whereas the materials that you cut up in carpentry are, are denser and bigger and thicker, and the tools that you use to cut them are way, way louder. This is a high-grade set of ear protectors. This is what they use in shooting galleries when they're practicing. What I'm suggesting is that you get yourself a set of these because once you have these, operating power tools is no more threatening than operating a sewing machine. That's something to think about right there. Now, saws. Saws are so versatile. There are a million different saws and there must be one out there for you because when I found my first saw, I was I practically slept with it under my pillow. I was so proud of it. This is it. The little sweetie, the trim saw, so called because it's mostly used for um, cutting baseboard and trim. That's why it's got such a tiny little blade. It's a great little saw, and I didn't even need my hearing protection for this because listen to the sound it makes. Isn't that great? This is another trim saw. It's a little bit bigger, it has a bigger blade, it has a little bit more heft, it's more powerful, and the way you use that, this one is like this. It's a two-handed grip. It's got a safety catch on the trigger so that you have to be pushing this. It's a very deliberately constructed safety device. You have to be pushing this little button with my thumb in order to operate the trigger. It does lots of special things if you're going to get you know, into different kinds of um, carpentry. You can adjust this so that you can cut angles and miter corners and things like that. Sewing terms, you know. Those carpenters, they stole all our sewing terms. Power tools can make you a bit nervous and so you have to really just take a deep breath and go step by step. So what I'll do is I'll use a couple of these F clamps, so called because they have that shape. I want to put them on to secure my board really well. As a woman, I think it's important to put my safety gear on in the right order so I don't mess my hair. For example, the safety glasses should always go on first, followed by the protective hearing gear. There we go. Much better. So I'm going to use this guide, this funny little cutout in the plate. I'm lining that up with the line that I made. Now I'm going to treat this saw with a lot of respect. I'm not going to just like charge through this like some big burly contractor. So watch closely, I'll go slow. First thing I'm going to do is start the motor, let it come to full speed, and then just nudge into the wood and check it to make sure that I'm coming right into the line that I made. I'm not sure you can see this, but as I'm pushing the saw into the wood, the blade guard is rising up, so I have to clear my wrist so that the blade guard doesn't hit it, because we want the blade guard to be allowed free passage. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put the saw blade back in the hole. I'm going to actually start it again and go into the cut with the blade spinning. If I start it in the, in, the, in the little slit that I've made here, I might not line it up right and the saw can kick back and I don't want that to ever happen. So start the motor outside the cut again. So this is the thing. I always used to get worried because I thought that the blade could fly off and, and ricochet off things. In fact, the blade is mounted so that as the blade is spinning this way, but the blade twists, the um, mounting screws twist the other way. So in fact, the blade is always self-tightening. So that is never going to happen. So I think you've seen enough of me sawing a longitudinal cut known as ripping the board. It's ripping when it's uh, along the length of the grain. So I'll just show you what it's like to do a cross cut. Glasses first, earphones second. Preserve the coiffure.
The rewarding sound of a waste piece of lumber thudding on the carpeted floor. So the only other thing I want to mention is that whenever you're cutting wood, always be sure that the waste piece can fall freely onto either onto the floor or, well, there's a variety of ways to do it, but you want the waste piece to be able to fall away from the saw blade. Otherwise, it can... Um, it can bind the blade, and then that, that tends to throw the saw back up at you. you. Like I've said before, you really don't want that to happen. Oh, once again, this is known as a circular saw. The, uh, the motor's on the side. It's called a side winder because it winds the blade from the side. The jigsaw. The jigsaw is an ideal woman's power tool. They're the sweetest little saws. These saws are made for making wavy, creative lines and things. Like, for example, if you wanted to make all the letters of the alphabet in plywood and put them up, you know, around your child's room, or maybe, maybe what you've always wanted is giant plywood lawn ornaments, you know? You know those attractive ones where they show the person, all you see is they're, they're bent over? You can make your own now if you have a jigsaw. Let me show you how to use these. Here's the cord for the jigsaw. Here's my extension cord. I tie a little knot before plugging it in so that I can't become separated from my power source. All right, so back go the safety glasses. Jigsaws are great, but you're working right over the motor, and so lots of stuff sprays around. So use your safety gear. For the 47th time, I just injured my hip, taking this corner a little too tightly. So this corner's coming off today, okay? We're losing it. And I want to get the right radius on this. I want to have a nice, smooth curve. And that's just not, that's just going to be a little too subtle. Perfect. This will give me some space to move around. Curvy lines. That's what jigsaws are born for. See this blade? All it does is go up and down really fast like this. And it's going to make a nice curvy line. And I'll show you the curvy line mechanism. Okay, now I'm going into the crest of my curve here. Woohoo! How cool! Look at that! of your labor. Isn't that great? Now I can just scoot by here. There'll be no more big bruise marks on my left hip. There you have it. See the curve? Jigsaws are great. Let me show you one more trick with the jigsaw. This is how you start the blade off in the middle of the wood. Like say, say you're installing a new sink in the kitchen and you need to cut a, an opening in the countertop. All you do is you need one pilot hole to get your jigsaw blade started. Voila. Put the blade in the hole that you've just created. Rev that engine. All right, so I have a lot more to show you. It's almost reverence you feel, isn't it? Is this a beauty or what? This is a gorgeous chop saw. The reason it's called a chop saw is because that's what it does best. It chops. It is a very precise and gorgeous tool. Now, why would I ever want one of these, you think to yourself? What if you've got a lot of rotten deck boards and you just decide, look, you know, the deck, it's rotten. Maybe the whole deck has got to go or maybe you're going to start right over. Have a big party, invite your friends over. You can man the chop saw or babe the chop saw, I think, which is more appropriate. This is how to babe a chop saw. You're at the chop saw. You need a board. Let's say it's a 42-inch board. Get you got a watch board. They can get away from you. Okay. Make your mark. 42 inches. Now, move your tape over so you get a really accurate mark. Slap on your speed square. Draw a nice straight line. Oops. OK, 
Okay, there's your mark. That is going to be your 42 inch length. Now check this out. Down here, I have a block. Always support the, the wood that you're cutting so that nothing flops off at the end of a cut. Okay, I put it against the fence. This is called a fence. And I put on my protective gear. First the eyeglasses so I don't mess my hair. Then the ear gear. I treat this saw with enormous respect. I always keep my hands outside of this area. So when I'm supporting this board, my hand is way over here, away from the blade. I'm going to turn it on, let the motor come to full rev before I start the cut. But watch this cut. It's gorgeous. Now see how that popped? That's what I was warning you about. If I had a proper size table, I would make sure that this end is supported too. These guys work really, really well. They're fast, they're clean, they're efficient, and you can concentrate really cleanly on what you're doing because it's one simple motion, just like a big cleaver. What's really cool about them is that they can also do trick cuts. For example, if I wanted a 45 degree angle on the end of a board, if I was mitering a corner, as we say in sewing, I would line up the blade. Look at the teeth on that baby. Aren't those something? That is toothsome. So look, here's the deal. There's a range of power tools, a vast and varied range. Saws in particular, it's just like having a good pair of scissors. You can have little tiny embroidery scissors like this fella here, or you can go with the ginormous pinking shears. It's all up to you. You decide, start somewhere, and just keep working with until you're comfortable. After all, how hard could it be? If you are ready to buy your own tool belt, you can still create an efficient caddy for nails and screws. Simply layer an assortment of nails and screws between two pieces of tape. Then, you don the screw caddy like a mantle of beauty and courage. Now, as you move about the home doing your home repairs, whenever you need a nail or a screw, you, you need look no further than your own shoulder. Not available in any catalog, the Screw Caddy is also a unique accent for evening wear. Three easy payments. Do your part for the Fix-It Babe movement. Wear the screw caddy with pride. Don't let the fact that men will cluster around you eager to discuss screwing and nailing techniques stop you. For a repair to remember, I'm Mag Ruffman.